Hey y'all, welcome to the video. I hope you can hear me all right. Uh, this is my first time doing a screen recording and this is gonna be a very interesting video. I have a lot of fuel economy data here. This is over 200,000 miles worth of data going through and we're gonna be looking at several subsets of data for this video and I'm going to analyze that data for you. So, Let's start. This is a 2003 truck. It's got a 5.9 Cummins. It's four wheel drive. And we have had several different tire sizes on the truck. The four tire sizes, and I will zoom here so that those who are watching on a cell phone or tablet can see what we are looking at here. And this is the tire size segment. We have General Grabber AT2s in 32 by 11. Toyo CTs in 33 by 11 and a half. Toyo MTs in 34 by 11 and a half. And, and Toyo MTs again in 35 by 12 and a half. What did we do for fuel economy on the four tire sizes? This truck has a 373 rear end. So let's start up here with the 32s. You might think that the smaller tire size is going to be the better fuel economy tire. Not necessarily. While it will have the least unsprung weight and the least resistance and the easiest acceleration, the highway fuel economy in this truck is a 95% highway, 5% city data set. This is consistent across the board. This wasn't necessarily true for me. 18.4 is what we averaged on the 32s. That's a stock tire size. There's even some air resistance at play here. There's always a side of the tire that faces into the wind. This is 11 inches wide and 32 inches tall facing into the wind. So taller tires will actually have a little bit more of a face. It's basically like a wall pushing at all times through the air. Minor, but it has an impact. Uh, especially impactful when you get into these larger sizes. And then rolling resistance. These, these two were the highest on rolling resistance, but once again, kind of a minor thing. It's going to be the... The unsprung weight is going to be a driving factor. And then the height of the tire as relates to gearing is the other driving factor. That's what led some of these to do really well. So let's let's move on. 18.4 for the 32. We have 18.8 for the 33 so far. These are the tires that are still on the truck. Um, interesting. 18.8. Uh, for sure, because 33 by 11 and a half, it's a lighter tire. The truck sits a half inch lower to the ground than, with, than when we had these 34s, and the tread is slightly less aggressive. But yet we did not do as well on fuel economy. The 34 by 11 and a half was my best at 19.02 miles a gallon. Um, that was a big surprise, but that is a tire that ended up doing well. The actual size on that tire was 285.75 R17. And then with the 35s, what was the penalty to go to a 35? Roughly a one mile per gallon penalty uh, going from 34 to 35 tires. And this, this is the true 35 with the 12 and a half inch width. These tires on their wheel were 100 pounds a piece, which is heavy. Um, I think this setup was somewhere in the 80s, 80 pound per on all four corners. So not nearly as heavy. But for only a one mile per gallon penalty, that's not bad. Now, for fun, we have a few other categories. And, and to conclude this section, it looks like the 34s did the best at 19. But the 35s were the worst at 18. So only about a one mile per gallon um, difference from best to worst 
in all four of these tire sizes. So tire size doesn't sway the fuel economy quite that much for a person who does 95% highway miles. If it was 95% city, we might see a more drastic um, change where these the spread here would actually be greater and, and the 32s may win it all. I think the 32 would win in a 95% city scenario, followed by the 33, then the 34, then the 35. So it would be completely jumble up the list. But And you'd see a spread of like two or three miles per gallon, potentially, probably about two miles a gallon between best and worst. So there'd be a bigger spread and the winners would be completely different because it would all come down to ease of acceleration and the 32s would have it. Uh, because they effectively change the gearing in a favorable way for acceleration. So, for fun, and we're going to be comparing to uh, the old data. Hang on, I know this is cut off for, for y'all's view. Um, now we're looking at it. Fuel additives. I have used fuel additives in the past. I, I haven't used as much lately because I've been running biodiesel B5 for lubricity. I wanted to see if there was some correlation between when we took data for 35s versus what we have so far for 33s. Uh, I did not take data for the 32 or 34 tires. Uh, I wasn't thinking about that back then. So if we remember back to the 35s, PALS MPK won this one, followed by OptiLube XL and Diesel Clean. And here's the numbers for the others. The result was a little bit different this time. PALS MPK was actually the worst out of all of these this time. So that win over here has been more or less nullified. And then Stanodyne Red got second place here uh, at 18.97. So that is a deviation of 0.2 miles a gallon better than the average. And if you come over here for Stanodyne Red, 18.11, that's about 0.1 miles per gallon better than average. Uh, actually, even less. It's right around the average, but we only had two tanks to test with on the 35s. Diesel Clean got third place on both sides. It was very consistent. We have, in this case, just above average fuel economy. Not, not much above average, though. Here we actually did surpass the average by almost 0.4 miles per gallon in that data set. Um, Stanodyne brown and blue. This is really interesting. Almost identical numbers here. 18.77 pretty much on both. If you look at Stanodyne brown and blue over here, pretty close as well. Stanodyne Brown in particular, almost identical to the average fuel economy for the tire. The same is true on the 33, almost identical to average fuel economy. So the Brown definitely doesn't change fuel economy much. Uh, it stays very consistent right around the average. Uh, Hot Shots EDT, this is a good additive, honorable mention for this one. 18.71, uh, even though it's a uh, little below average, it's uh, still an additive that I like. Uh, Schaefer's did really well uh, in my five tank test that I did uh, earlier in the year. And I never did do a video on the Schaefer additive, but it did perform well. I would have liked to have seen what it would have done over here if it would have uh, been consistent. So that is the fuel additives, obviously small sample sets, sizes, but it's hard to get large sample sizes when I don't run the additives every tank and when there's so many additives to try. But I thought y'all would enjoy that information. Let's come down here to brands. Brands are interesting because my hypothesis has been it doesn't matter what the brand is as long as the fuel is fresh. It all comes out of the same pipe. But let's see if we have any correlation. Last time, this was a really good example. Stop and go. Y'all probably, this probably doesn't mean anything to you because it's just a local gas station in, in the area. 
but it was one that was just built. And so all the underground tanks are fresh. The fuel is as fresh as can be. What did that result for us? It actually resulted the number one score for MPG. I know we only had four tanks there, but I thought that meant something. We have guaranteed fresh fuel and good fuel economy to boot. Raceway came in second, and uh, I only have one Raceway tank, and I didn't even include it in the data set as a result. I actually deleted that. Um, so I really don't know about Raceway, how it compares. Chevron, out of the big three, you can see these three here, Shell, Exxon, and Chevron, dominated in terms of number of tanks uh, that I've filled up. Chevron wins, not by much, but you'll see Chevron, then Shell, then Exxon right there in a virtual tie, but still trailing in third. What happened with 33s? Now, let's come back to stop and go. Six tanks, 18.81. That's right about average. So this one came back to Earth. Now the big three, Shell, Exxon, and Chevron. Chevron wins again, 19.08. That's... That's fairly good, 0.2 miles a gallon, better than average. Uh, it does end up winning. And, and would you know that just a little over 0.2 miles a gallon, better than average over here at 35s as well. And then we had Shell in second place among the big three at 18.77. That's just a hair below average. And Exxon literally right on Shell's tail in third again. So we reproduced. Chevron, Exxon, and Shell with the 33-inch tires in that data set. Um, this time, I've been doing a lot of filling up a racetrack, um, and that's where I'm doing my B5 testing right now. 23 tanks uh, since we've had 33-inch tires, including like 14 of the last 15 tanks or so. 18.75, that's right about our average, our running average racetrack. Uh, also was right about average with the 33s. So no surprises here. Some, some consistency and some correlation between the two data sets. That's good to see. But overall, fuel economy spread is less than 0.3 miles per gallon uh, spread between all of these. And I think if we got larger data sets, it would get even closer. Uh, let's see on this one here. The worst was, Racetrack was actually the worst there of that data set, even though it was still at average for that tire size. See, I didn't start keeping track of the fuel stations until fairly late in these tires' lifespan. I mean, mid middle of their life to end of life, when they were broken in and getting a little bit better fuel economy. So that's why none of these fared worse than average. There's also a bunch that were excluded that had less than four Phillips. But um, as far as spread goes, 18.1 was the worst, and 18.7 was about 0.6 miles a gallon spread here. That's interesting that uh, we actually have a bigger spread. So a little bit more meaningful, but if we, if we assume that stop and go would have come back to earth and that uh, maybe raceway was, was the top one, that's still, still half a mile a gallon spread. So... Final data point was the recent biodiesel test. I've done seven tanks, and I'm working on my eighth right now. Fuel economy is 18.82, 18.81-ish, just slightly above average. It's really a uh, negligible difference. It's running right about average. So no fuel economy penalty for running B5, but also no real benefit either. So that's going to do it for me in this one. I hope you all enjoyed the video and found it interesting. Um, this is a CSV file, comma separated file that I that I have for my data. And I keep track of this on Fuely. And it's really interesting to see the trends. You can see how much I was paying for diesel, how when I first got these tires and I was I was concerned about my fuel bills when I had 35s in the green here to 33s, fuel prices were in the 250s, 260s at that time. You can even see where I paid 280. Then 
come to uh, present day and we're paying a dollar eighty nine dollar ninety six. So the fuel prices ended up becoming more manageable. Um, you can see how many miles I went on a tank, uh, what day I filled up, how many miles was on the truck. It's really interesting. You could also see when I was using fuel additives. Uh, I was using a lot of them back in March and April, but lately, hardly any. Uh, I've been using the B5 biodiesel. Uh, really in this, this area right here is probably mostly B5 tanks. So, yeah, um, I think I'm going to end the video here, and I'm hoping to do some more fuel economy data with the 6.7 Cummins, uh, especially as we look at how uh, the emission system affected fuel economy. That is going to require a lot of more data collection on my part, but we will get there, and that's going to be the next MPG video, I think. So y'all have a good one. I'll see you next time. We are over 16 minutes uh, coming up. We will have um, a video on the Centromatic wheel and hub and tire balancers and how they've been holding up for me because y'all haven't heard about that since I installed them almost two years ago. So I'll have an owner review of that coming up soon sometime in the next couple of weeks. So take care. I'll see you next time.